Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I am trespassing at this old dilapidated resident evil ass cabin that's behind me to do something a little off brand for you guys. And that is to review an AR-15. Welcome to the family, son. I'm typically known as more of an AK guy. I just find them more interesting, more fun to shoot. But there are a few AR-15s out there that are kind of interesting to me. And when Adam's Arms hit me up to do a review on one of their new rifles coming out, the P3, which is what you see here, it doesn't come looking like this. I did change a few things about it, which I'll go into. Initially, I was a little, um, you know, didn't really care that much because it just seemed like another AR-15, but when I did some research and found out that Adam's Arms is primarily known for their piston-driven ARs, uh, caught my interest a little bit. So when it means that it's a gas piston gun, that means that there is a piston inside of here running along the top of the barrel versus a typical AR-15, which is a DI gun or direct impingement, which means that there's just a gas tube inside of here. And how that works is that when you fire the round, when the bullet's traveling down the barrel, the gas that's behind it uh, will siphon into that gas tube and then that's what cycles the uh, next round when it pushes the bolt carrier back versus a piston gun it just has a piston here so when that gas reaches it it pushes that piston back and it just makes for a more uh, clean system that means that there's no gas coming back in here or hardly any going into your bolt and bolt carrier versus a DI gun, the uh, common phrase that's used is that DI guns shit where they eat. That means all the gas is getting up in here versus a piston gun. Um, it's supposed to be a lot more reliable because you're not getting any of that fouling inside of here. I have used DI guns throughout my entire time in the military. This is actually my first ever gas piston gun. So I do not think that DI guns are you know unreliable and that gas piston guns are superior in every way. They both have their upsides and downsides to them, but I did find that this rifle was pretty interesting and through shooting it and in the review process, I did kind of end up uh, loving this gun for different reasons. And there are a few things I do, uh, don't like about this gun as well, which I did change and I do have more plans for this thing in the future. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the rifle, my experience shooting this thing, some things I like, some things I don't like, how I have this rifle set up and whether or not a gas piston AR-15 is the right rifle for you. Before we get into it any further, guys, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Badlands Ammunition. They provided all of the ammunition I use in the testing of this rifle. They make really good ammo. And if you go to the website and use code BLUEJEAN at checkout, it gets you a discount there and it helps out the channel. So big thank you to Badlands. Now let's get back in this video. All right, guys, so when going over this rifle, we're gonna be doing the typical gun tube thing and doing tip to butt as Grantham has made the standard. And we're gonna be starting off here with the muzzle device. So this is not the muzzle device that comes with the rifle. The one that you see here in my hand is the one that you'll be getting if you get the P3. And this is a jet break, I believe made by Adam's Arms. And in my opinion, guys, I'm not a huge fan of this muzzle brake. It is very reminiscent of the Zenico DTK style muzzle brake. It's the same style of muzzle brake that I have on my AK-103. And what I have found when it comes to this thing being on a 5.56 rifle, I found that this thing kind of overdrives the rifle down a little bit and kind of overcompensates, especially just for 5.56. Um, so I didn't really like it that much and I opted to switch it out to this thing. This thing is from Wit Machine and Tool. I've had this thing for a while now, and this isn't a suppressor or anything like that. This is a sound mitigation device, and underneath of it has a more traditional style muzzle brake that doesn't have the ports on the top, which I think is what is leading to the overdriving of the rifle down. So if I can get this thing off. So it's a little wet because we did a little uh, reliability test on it, but as you can see, it's more of a standard type of muzzle brake. And what's cool about this thing is that it actually does reduce the noise signature, and it kind of just drives everything forward, very similar to the blast board device that I was using on the AK-74. This thing is just more pleasant to shoot and even now it is a little bit more you know recoil versus if I just took this thing off and was just using the muzzle brake underneath of it it's not bad it's 556 especially when you're used to shooting guns like sim 62 by 39 AKs recoil is not that bad you don't need a crazy muzzle brake on your AR 15 to get quick follow-up shots it's totally doable with just something like this my plan in the future is to swap this out for a suppressor 
because this is a uh, gas piston uh, AR-15, they are really nice to uh, shoot suppress and you can adjust the piston inside of here depending on if you're using a suppressor or what environment you're in. So moving back from the muzzle device, we're gonna be getting into one of the main features that this rifle has to offer and that is the barrel. So the barrel is a proof research carbon fiber wrap barrel. It is 16 inches and is chambered in 223 wild. And when I first heard that it was a carbon fiber rack barrel, I was a little skeptical. I'm mainly familiar with standard like steel barrels. And I didn't know how durable this thing was gonna be, but this thing is actually pretty awesome because it makes for a very light package, especially with its having a gas piston system. Gas piston guns are typically known to be a little bit more front heavy, but with the uh, carbon fiber rack barrel, you don't really notice the weight that much and it is a very light rifle. You can definitely just hold it out like this, not that you'd want to shoot like this. Um, it's just a very handy rifle. It's nice to walk around with. And with carbon fiber rack barrels, they do help reduce the, the heat of the barrel more than a steel barrel would. And they are advertised as being more durable than a standard steel barrel as well, which I think is pretty cool, especially for how light it is. All right, so moving back from the barrel, you have the handguard. This is from Adams Arms. This is this their standard M-Lock handguard. Nothing much to write home here. It just seems like a standard M-Lock handguard. What I do like about it, it has the full uh, Picatinny on the top here, which I do prefer versus some of the handguards out there that have M-Lock on the top and just like a couple section, sections of Picatinny. Um, I don't really need this thing to be any lighter up front. Um, so I do appreciate that they have this so you can mount any of your lights, lasers, wherever you want. So quickly talking about the gas piston here, it is a short stroke gas piston system. There are AR-15s AR AR out there that have a long stroke gas piston, which is you know the same one that is in an AK, but this one's a short stroke. And again, you can adjust this thing. There are um, a couple different settings on here. That way, if you're running a suppressor, you can dial it back so you're not getting so much gas back at you. Even though piston guns do direct all that stuff forward, so they are very good at suppressing versus a DI gun, which you have to finely tune to do the job without getting a bunch of gas back in your face. So moving back here, we're gonna be talking about here on the lower. So seems like a standard kind of AR-15 lower, but it does have a few kind of cool upgrades to it. So the P3 series is like their top of the line piston series guns. So it does have a lot of, you know, top of the line features about it. And the main thing I want to talk about here is the trigger. So the trigger is from Diamond Tech. I think it's Diamond Tech Triggers. And it actually took me a while to kind of get used to. It doesn't feel anything like any kind of standard AR-15 triggers out there. I'm mostly familiar with Geisley. I love Geisley, and I still think that Geisley, to me, as far as like a combat rifle type of trigger, I think Geisley is superior. But as far as a making precision shots goes, uh, this thing is quite excellent. It actually feels a lot like a 1911 trigger, and it is very nice. Um, the only thing about it that I'm not a huge fan of, and this is just like the grunt part of me kind of coming out or the infantry part of me coming out, is that this thing is adjustable. So if you want to come in here and look at this. So as you can see inside there, it has this little screw right here. So if you have an Allen key, you can adjust this thing up and down and that makes the trigger pull uh, lighter or harder. So I think I have it on like the medium setting. Didn't want to fuck with it a little too much because I didn't want to get to a setting where it's like super light or super hard. Kind of just left it how they left it here. And to me, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's a little too gamery for my taste. Um, I'd prefer it just to be like a set trigger and that, you know, what you get is what you get, so much like a Geisley. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there would like how adjustable this thing is, especially if you're gonna use this thing in any type of competition setting, or if you're gonna use this thing for like precision work and put like an optic on this thing and try to stretch this thing out, you are able to get some very accurate shots with this rifle. Um, it actually surprised the heck out of me, and I think a large part of that has to do with how precise this trigger is and how precise you can be with it. And with the proof concepts um, barrel on here, um, it just makes for a very accurate pl platform, even for it being a gas piston gun, which gas piston guns are known for being a little bit more inaccurate than a, um, a DI gun. 
but I think this rifle has a bunch of things going for it that makes it for a very accurate platform. So while we have the rifle open, another couple features about it that this rifle comes with is it does have Adams Arms lightweight bolt carrier. This thing is pretty cool. It's very different than how a typical bolt, bolt carrier would look. And as you can see, it is set up for a piston system. And also on top of here, it comes with a Radian charging handle. So really good charging handle coming with the rifle, which you know would be expected if you're paying $2,500 for a rifle. And you'd expect it to have some nice features like that. So this is after about a thousand rounds of shooting this thing. And I also just dunked this thing into some muddy water in a pond and I just got done kind of mag dumping with this thing. This rifle is just smooth as butter. I think a large part of that has to do with this bolt, carrying, bolt carrier in here. Um, it just makes for a very smooth shooting rifle. And uh, even after all the kind of abuse I put this thing through, it rides just fine. You don't feel any of the grit inside of there. And I think a large part of that also has to do with it not getting all that gas and gunk inside of here to kind of clogging up the system. All right, so a couple other features that this rifle comes with. It also has an Ambi 45 degree safety. Um, I'm more familiar with 90 degree safeties. It's just what I've trained more on, but I totally get it. These things are really easy to actuate. Um, I'm still more of a fan of the traditional 90 degree safety. Um, that's just because I'm more familiar with them. I'm sure that uh, these things, a lot of people like these a lot better. I'm not going to specifically, uh, you know, seek rifles out with the same, but it is kind of a nice feature. And you also comes with this ergo grip. I'm more of a fan of the BCM gunfighter grip, um, but we did used to use these ergo grips uh, when I was in Ranger Battalion, and I do prefer these over like a standard uh, A2 style grip. So moving towards the back here, it does not come with a CAR 15 style stock. It actually comes with this monstrosity here. This is a, a Luth AR stock and uh, removing this was part of the uncringifying of this rifle and you get extra cool points immediately once you put a CAR-15 stock on a rifle. Um, I just like the way they look. It's kind of a vibe and I just needed something to replace this thing. I'm sure this is a quality stock. Um, this thing looks like it's made for more precision rifle shooting which I think this, this rifle is kind of designed for and it's well set up for it. But again, uh, just hated the look of this thing. Um, I'm sure this will work for a lot of people, but not for me. <laughs> the rifle also comes with these iron sights. This is from Chris. Uh, I decided to take these things off just because it didn't really work so hot with this optic setup here. This, uh, this is just a Holosun Ames on a Unity Tactical Riser. Um, the only reason I have the Ames on here right now is because I'm working on a video kind of comparing this to some of its competitors. But I think in the future, I'm gonna set this thing up for a more you know, precision type of build with uh, you know, some glass on here with some good magnification. I wanna see how far I could push this rifle because I do think that this thing is well set up to be um, a gun that's more suited for long distance shooting. Out of the box, I was getting some really good groupings at 100 yards. It really surprised the heck out of me, especially for how tight the grouping was, um, even with a piston driven gun, which are supposed to be more inaccurate but I think in the future, again, this is going to be more of like my precision type of AR. And I definitely, I think this is the rifle I'm going to be using for most of my hunting out here because I have a ton of deer out here and I do like to hunt. And I think this is going to be the rifle that I will take out there because again, it is super light, lightweight. It's easy in the hands and I don't really need a, uh, you know, my, my block two to go out there and shoot some deer. Um, this thing will probably be a lot nicer to carry around and it also has a 16 inch barrel versus my 14.5 block two. So you do get a little bit extra muzzle velocity out of it. But as far as the reliability of this rifle goes, I haven't had any issues in the thousand rounds of firing through this thing, which isn't a huge round count, but I do think that this thing is a reliable firearm. I also did a quick little mud test up at the range where I dunked this thing in the water and the mud in my trench and ran through those rounds fine. The only issue I had was with a magazine, but as far as this thing running, um, with it being kind of like doused in mud and water. It was fine. Most rifles would pass that test, but I thought it was pretty interesting. So overall guys, would I recommend getting a rifle like this or a piston driven AR over your standard DI gun? Um, if you want to, that's fine. I don't think that 
piston driven guns are way more reliable than a well-built di gun and another thing that you have to consider is from like a prepared civilian kind of standpoint one of the benefits of an ar-15 here in america is the fact that they are super prevalent especially di versions so when you get a piston driven gun and stuff that is a little bit out of the norm you will have a harder time finding spare parts for these things and to keep these things running throughout the years so if there was ever a situation Situation where we needed to defend our life, liberty, and freedom. Um, I don't think that a piston driven AR would necessarily be the best choice. Would it get the job done? Definitely. But if it came down to it, I'm still going to grab my DI uh, Block 2 over this thing as far as like my go to war gun. But this thing, again, is pretty cool. And I do definitely have more plans for this thing in the future. That one might not be my like go to war rifle. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video in this quick fuck. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video in this look at the Adams Arms P3. Again, I think it's a pretty cool rifle. And if you guys have any opinions on gas piston versus DI, please let me know in the comments. Um, again, this is my first ever gas piston AR and let me know uh, what you guys think is superior. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch which helps out the channel also guys if you want to get involved with the channel a little bit more directly i got patreon helps me buy guns gear ammo all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else but hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time